rather than being more traditionally called in to read for a part, or even being offered a role due to their exceptional work on another well-known property, for example, the following folks all found themselves being gifted a part or granted an opportunity to throw their name into the casting hat due to everything from hilariously absurd talk show raps to simply being one of the most charming souls ever to walk into a shoe store. Gareth here from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 shocking ways actors were cast that you didn't know about. Number 10, Haley Joel Osment was captured in Ikea by two casting directors. Forrest Gump. The creepy way a young Haley Joel Osment was introduced to the world of acting is questionable to say the least. As the eventual The Sixth Sense star would recall to Vulture a few years back, during a trip to Burbank's local Ikea, Osment just so happened to walk past a random casting table with two women sat behind it. He were taking Polaroids of all the kids who would come into the store. Not disturbing at all. Later down the road, however, said taking of Osmond's picture opened the door for a Pizza Hut commercial, which eventually wiggled onto the radar of the casting director for the upcoming Forrest Gump feature around that time. And as the child sensation would explain, just from that commercial, the casting director for Forrest Gump got in contact with us, and I was reading with director Robert Zemeckis and Tom Hanks pretty soon after that. It may have all worked out in the end, but there's no doubting that Osmond's rise to superstardom got off to a bit of a dodgy start in the Swedish furniture store. Number 9. Steven Spielberg discovers Alden Ehrenreich in a bat mitzvah comedy video, Tetro. You just never know where the next Han Solo might pop up next. Sitting within a Karelian light freighter as they attempt to evade the Imperial forces, or maybe even in a pals comedy bat mitzvah video dressed in a girl's kimono. The latter was exactly the bizarre scenario Alden Ehrenreich found himself in when Hollywood icon Steven Spielberg just so happened to stumble upon the eventual next iteration of the legendary Star Wars smuggler many moons ago. As the Han Solo actor would confess to Vanity Fair when discussing the hilarious movie business fable that was said to have paved the way for his first few TV roles in a part in Francis Ford Coppola's Tetro, if I had any idea that anyone would see that, I probably wouldn't have done it. It's really funny that he could glean anything from that. Spielberg clearly saw something in the charismatic bat mitzvah display, however, and it wasn't long before Aaron Reich was being labelled as the new Leonardo DiCaprio by the late Roger Ebert for his part in Coppola's flick. Number 8. Jason Statham's jewellery flogging past inspires his casting, lock, stock and two smoking barrels. Living quite the life before he ever decided to take a stab at the business of show, on top of being a British Commonwealth-level diver, the future action superstar known as Jason Statham also found himself selling knockoff jewellery on street corners as a way of making ends meet. And it was this black market hustle that directly influenced Guy Ritchie's decision to cast the up-and-comer in his 1998 flick by the name of Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, with Statham taking on the role of, you guessed it, a bloke who acts as a con artist throughout the comedy thriller film. As Statham himself would note when discussing his breakout role as Bacon later down the road, no acting required, just me stepping into a world of cinema doing what I used to do. And before the newcomer knew what hit him, he went from street vendor to movie star in what felt like a blink of a damn eye. Number 7. Charlie Hunnam flirts his way into the business, Biker Grove Charlie Hunnam was actually in the thick of film school when he managed to score his big break into the business. Instead of doing so via the traditional route of being put up for a role by his agent or a friend within the industry, however, Hunnam unexpectedly took matters into his own hands long before he was spearheading the likes of Sons of Anarchy and The Gentleman. As the Geordie sensation would reveal on The Graham Norton Show in 2017, he was first discovered during a stint of last-minute Christmas Eve shopping in his local JD Sports. A touch merry thanks to a few beverages beforehand, as you do. Hunnam caught the eye of a lady in the store, blew her a kiss, and gave her a cheeky wink for good measure. Said woman actually turned out to be the casting director for popular British TV series Biker Grove, who thought the confident lab was quite lovely. And as Hunnam would recall while squirming, she invited me in, I did an audition, and they gave me a part, which I haven't seen since I did it, which was 20 years ago. Yeah, probably for the best. Number 6. The casting director felt sorry for Robert Pattinson, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Immortalizing himself in the hearts of teenagers the world over in the wake of his mid noughties debuts in the likes of the Harry Potter and Twilight movie adaptations, it may come as a bit of a surprise to hear that the former big break in particular was actually more of a favor to Robert Pattinson than anything else. During a conversation with W Magazine years after his first steps into the movie world, the Batman star would confess that the Goblet of Fire wasn't actually his first big role within the business. The Brit was initially cast as Reese Witherspoon's son in Vanity Fair, and filmed scenes for the 2004 flick before his role was cut in the editing room, a fact Pattinson wasn't made aware of until he'd actually taken in the flick himself. Ouch. 
Yeah, this unfortunate turn of events actually resulted in casting director Mary Selway feeling so guilty about the way the youngster was treated that she eventually gifted Pattinson with a first shot at Cedric Diggory when it came time to cast an actor for this pivotal Potter part. And the rest was spellbinding history, of course. Number 5. Diane Kruger had to jump through a crazy amount of hoops in Glorious Bastards. The same Quentin Tarantino who has routinely found a way to nudge stars into his incoming projects whilst well and truly hammered, had a rather bizarre way of landing on the actor for the role of Bridget von Hammersmark in Inglorious Bastards. As eventual Bridget star Diane Kruger would reveal on the Rain with Josh Smith podcast, many years on from the film absolutely smashing it with the critics and at the box office, Tarantino actually didn't want the actor anywhere near the part initially for one rather awkward reason. As she put it, he auditioned everyone, he didn't want to audition me because he saw a movie that I was in he didn't like. If the fact that Tarantino only presented the thespian with audition time because there was no one left to audition wasn't bad enough, the star was also forced to pay for her own flight from New York to Germany to meet with the combustible director. The jumping through these many frustrating hoops only made Kruger even more determined to nail the role though, with the actor thinking, you know what, F him, I'm just gonna do that and prove to him that I can do it. And Kruger went on to do precisely that and then some. Number 4. Simu Liu tweets his name into the hat Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings While it may not have directly played into Kevin Feige's thinking when it came to the decision to hand Simu Liu the keys to Shang-Chi's kingdom in the lead-up to his MCU debut in The Legend of the Ten Rings, the actor's now legendary comments on Twitter seven years before being given the superhero green light may just have influenced the universe more than he could have ever imagined. Liu would post onto the social media sites back in 2014, Hey Marvel, great job with Captain America and Thor, now how about an Asian-American hero? Before following up that post a few years later with a tweet of, OK Marvel, are we going to talk about Shang-Chi? It's not completely outside the realms of possibility that Liu's willingness to nudge and poke Marvel Studios into bringing Shang-Chi into the mix may have had an impact on some important casting folks when it came time to give the hero his own corner of the MCU. With Feige himself also admitting, I did not see that, unfortunately, Simu, it was not you tweeting, it was your acting ability, your constant professionalism, and the multiple reads and meetings that you did. Now, did Sarah Finn see that, our casting director? I don't know the answer. So we'll leave that one up to you guys at home, yeah? Number 3. Edward Furlong was picked up outside of a boys club. Terminator 2 Judgment Day The story of how a young Edward Furlong went from complete unknown to one of the stars of James Cameron's Terminator sequel can also be filed under the slightly odd slash creepy development category. After cycling through the many up-and-coming child actors then plying their trade within the industry for the role of a young John Connor in Judgment Day, Cameron and casting director Mali Finn were at a dead end in their long-running search. Then, when knocking around a boys club in Pasadena, as you do, I guess, Marley approached a furlong who was understandably a little concerned about an older lady staring at him. Without skipping a beat, the kid quipped at Finn, What do you want, frog lips? But instead of recoiling at the jagged remark, the casting director offered him the unexpected chance to read for the part of Connor. Sure enough, as Furlong himself would admit, after numerous rounds of auditioning and sweating balls, as he put it, Cameron picked up the phone to the acting rookie and his life was changed forever. Number 2. Austin Butler's heartbreaking dream leads to an epic song, Elvis. Stumbling upon a rather tragic connection between himself and the king of rock and roll, during his time spent researching Elvis Presley before Baz Luhrmann had decided on his very own actor to play the immortal star, Austin Butler would discover that both he and Elvis lost their mothers in their early 20s. So when faced with a particularly distressing nightmare in the lead-up to sending off a tape to the Elvis director, involving his mom being alive again but dying as he put it, the actor would explain to Vogue, I thought he probably had nights where he woke up from nightmares like this. So what can I do with that? Butler proceeded to record himself singing a version of Unchained Melody at a piano in only his bathrobe. In altering his focus on the song from delivering it to a lover to instead singing the heartbreaking tune as if to his own mother, the star poured his soul into the music and definitely caught Lerman's attention. As the director put it, was it an audition or was he having a breakdown? Either way, he was gripped, and the actor was one step closer to stepping into the king's shoes on the big screen. Number 1. Weird Al loved Daniel Radcliffe's rap, Weird, the Al Yankovic story. You never quite know which significant figure will be tuning in to see you shoot the breeze with a charismatic host on a Friday night. In the case of Harry Potter icon Daniel Radcliffe, said person was the master of parody himself, Weird Al Yankovic. And the program in question was a 2010 edition of The Graham Norton Show, which involved a British thespian letting loose a rather notable rap in front of 
of the likes of Colin Farrell and Rihanna. Now that's quite a couch. After taking in Radcliffe's bizarre rendition of The Elements on a pretty bemused star-studded red sofa, Yankovic eventually realized that Dan was most definitely his man for the parody biopic job. He'd even confess as much on Twitter before the release of Weird, the Al Yankovic story, telling his followers above a clip of said comedy rap, there are many reasons why I wanted to cast Daniel Radcliffe in my movie, but this is what really clinched the deal for me. He's gonna absolutely kill this. Radcliffe would also add that I guess Al saw that and was like, this guy maybe gets it, and so he picked me. And some no doubt even weirder accordion sessions with Al himself would eventually follow. And that's our list. Know of any other shocking ways actors were cast that you didn't know about? Let us know all about them in the comment section right down below. And do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're there. Also, if you like this kind of thing, then head on over to whatculture.com and find some more awesome articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on. I have been Gareth from WhatCulture.com. Thank you, as always, for clicking on this lovely video today. Hopefully, I'll see you very, very soon. But in the meantime, be good to yourself. Bye-bye.